my name is Eddie Toffbeck. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. Here's your weekly technical analysis of Chicago wheat and corn. I'll start with Chicago wheat. Nine weeks ago, we saw the top of the recent market capped by the upper time, currently 800 even, or 8 even if you like, uh, of the March to July bullish shift pitchfork. Now this is a shallowly bullish pitchfork, but one should not underestimate its power. Anyway, prices started a stuttering move lower, down through the middle time, currently 713, of the same pitchfork, as well as the short medium moving average, currently 732 and the medium moving average currently 705. Now these supports did not stop the decline and prices next challenged the important January 2021 high at 693 and the 50% Fibonacci line for the whole of 2021 at 689. Both, both these also buckled but by now all these broken supports had eroded enough of the bearish incentive that when prices approach the next level of supports below them and that's the important 50% absolute Fibonacci line at 675 and the 50% Fibonacci line of the big old 2012-2015 move at 670 along the slowly rising long moving average currently 681 well these supports were better able to deflect the bearish incentive enough of a deflection that they were not even tested and prices started rising back up four weeks ago a few things happen now in this rise. The most obvious thing was the creation of a complex series of reverse head and shoulders patterns over the mid-August to end of September period. You can see the limited necklines on the daily chart and I have not labelled any targets as they have already been achieved. I regret to say I only really saw these patterns more or less in hindsight after retiring and removing the bullish March to July and July to September Andrews, bullish Andrews pitchforks. These two had become redundant. However, the previously mentioned bullish shift pitchfork for the March to July move and the newly constructed July to September bullish shift pitchfork, well, they are both still valid and doing well, at least so far. Okay, as I said last week, I know that this is a lot to get hold of, but please feel free to rewind and play this bit again of the recording, and you'll see that it does make sense. Now, last week I suggested concentrating on two separate bullish Andrews pitchforks and a singular bullish shift pitchfork. All these seem to be the dominant patterns right now. Well, I would like to finesse those comments to now concentrate on the two bullish shift pitchforks we have left, especially the newer July to September bullish shift pitchfork, as the market seems to be traveling higher in between the lower time, currently at 716, and the middle time, currently at 786. We're also having some support emerging from the gently rising short medium moving average currently 732 but on a closing basis only so watch out for that. Meanwhile topside resistance well that seems like to be the area around the April to May well April May and recent October highs roughly 770 to 776. Chicago corn as I mentioned here last week and the two weeks beforehand, the most important feature to consider in recent days was the move down below the long moving average, currently at 561, especially the second time, second time done six weeks ago. This proper break below the long moving average hadn't happened, well, really, since November 2019. Questions I posed for the last three, now four weeks, well, would the market exploit this move lower and if it did which pattern would it choose now the first bit was easy though it was done with some style six weeks ago a weekly key reversal down our prices hesitated around the key combination of the 61.8 percent absolute fibonacci line of 525 which is also the 2014 high eventually prices did push below this key support combination and with two main patterns a sideways triangle and a descending triangle the sideways triangle was formed on the top side by the two-pointed downtrend currently at 546 from the start of July and below by the broken, well broken indeed, July to September uptrend with at the time its now departing partner, the long moving average. This had a potential target X in the 509 area which was achieved five weeks ago. 
Meanwhile, the descending triangle utilizes the extension of that same June to date downtrend on the top side, but then the flat base of the previously mentioned key combination of the 61.8% absolute Fibonacci line at 525 and the 2014 high at the same level. Now, this has an initial target X1 below in the 475 area with a secondary target X2 in the 425 area, right on the 50% absolute Fibonacci line. So far, all well and good. However, the market has had some other ideas and over the past two weeks, prices have risen enough that we've moved back up over the 61.8% um, absolute Fibonacci combination and all the way till two weeks ago, we almost touched the rising long moving average. And then early last week when prices actually touched the downtrend. However, the market recoiled back lower for the rest of last week and most of this. Thus actually making the downtrend a three-pointer in the process. So what does this mean? Well, an obvious choice would be that the drop down to the start of September was a false break lower. And I can see the point of that. However, these markets, like life, are usually a lot more complicated than that. And I think this may be the case here. You see, the move back up over the period of two to three weeks ago seems to have been a disguised period of indecision. This can be seen by the day the market reached up and touched the long moving average. It was also a long legged indecisive spinning top, yet which can also be seen as a countering bearish her army plus an outside day. So you can see that last week's and this week's overall move lower was not that surprising. Yet above this we still have the seeming reluctance for the market to head down below the 61.8% absolute Fibonacci line and the 2014 high combination at 525. What I can say is this, the downtrend is squishing this market between the 525 level and the declining downtrend. By the second week of November, that gap will cease to exist. So soon one may look to a solution to whether this is a descending triangle that makes a fresh break lower or, low or higher after a number of false starts. There is one other option that made itself available though. It's to look at the July to date action as a possible descending wedge pattern. Now there is merit in this, with a lower trend line well below, currently at 484. However, it all depends on what happens at the 525 area. It's because of this and the other recent disguised indecision that I've said over the last two weeks, and I repeat again this week, and I quote, I'm also quite happy to start targeting the top side as well, but only on a confirmed break higher. Keep an eye on this, end of quote. One final thing. I've been I have been over last week and this very tempted to draw a new mid-August to very early October Andrews Pitchfork, bearish Andrews Pitchfork. So far I've resisted a temptation, but if we start heading lower between now and say the next commentary, well then I might just have to succumb. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit.